So we're going to talk a little bit about the documentation and then about debugging programs here. So um, when you're working with Java, there's some uh, a lot of documentation built into the library there. So what we call the API specifications. Uh, you can go here uh, to this Java API documentation. There's a link right here. Um, and we'll post a link in Blackboard also. And it talks about every class in Java and what you can do. Uh, so I'm going to scroll down. Let's look at, we, we've looked at our scanner class a little bit. I'm going to search for scanner and scroll down to find a, the main scanner class here. Um, and click on that. And so every class that's built in the Java is dis defined and described here. So here's the scanner class, which is nice. It gives some nice examples of like how to declare a scanner class and how to use it to read in an integer and different things. So it walks you through a number of examples on here uh, and talks about some different syntax for how numbers are specified and read in. Uh, then it talks about the constructor and how you construct a, con, uh, a class. Now, these built-in classes often get quite complicated. So these are all different constructors for the scanner class and how you can construct the scanner, scanner class out of different things. So sometimes it is a little intimidating because there are so many different constructors similar with methods. Um, so we've seen things like next int. Um, and how uh, the next int, what the next int is. So here's, where's the next int uh, method? Uh, here's the next int method, so we can look at that. But there's all these other methods, next big integer, next big decimal, and even like find uh, next, or has, I mean, has next, and stuff like that. Uh, so there's lots of different methods that can be built in this uh, class. Um, but again, if I just find next int uh, here and I click on it and it'll tell me again a little bit wh what this does and then we'll learn later about what kind of exceptions it can ca uh, cast uh, for us. So the Java documentation is really helpful for learning some things, but uh, to tell you the truth, a lot of programmers also just Google things. So if I want to learn, if I'm some problems reading in an integer, I can just type in, in in Google Java scanner class and look at some things, some examples here. Now, uh, one of the popular sites out there is called Stack Overflow. So Stack Overflow uh, is where people post questions on programming and answers to programs. Uh, now, some people post, uh, post but real post real questions and answers, not just uh, I can't figure out this homework exercise, but sometimes you'll see homework posted here too. Um, but here's an, how do I read uh, input from the council? So I'm going to click on that. Uh, again, how do I read from the scanner class? Uh, they're trying to do something here. So um, every question will be voted up or down on how good that question will be, and so will the different answers. So there are 10 answers to this question. The top answer has 11 votes, uh, and the next answer down here has 10 votes and then two votes. So I would tend to ignore the, the lower voted uh, answers. They may not be accurate, uh, but this one has 71 votes, and it walks you through how to use this. So again, Stack Overflow is certainly an important uh, website to use when you're programming uh, and a lot of real programmers use it and you should be able to find lots of answers here so between the java documentation and and google and stack overflow there is some nice online help so go through this exercise um, and uh, feel free to go through these um, questions here now let's talk a little bit about debugging so you'll spend a lot of time <coughs> Excuse me. So you spend a lot of time writing programs and then having to debug them in different. So sometimes uh, the bugging really bothers some people, but other people find it interesting. I tend to find it a little more interesting. It's kind of like a mystery to me, and you try to look at the clues to solve the mystery. Um, so it walks you through this idea of how you might debug a program if it's not doing the right uh, thing. How do you go through it and uh, so walk through this example. It shows you how uh, the author will put in uh, a, 
here we're actually doing some calculations and we're thinking maybe the printout isn't working right so uh, after we do the calculation we actually uh, reassign the value we're printing out to some number to make sure the printout is working co correctly and then they put in some nice comments here uh, to remind themselves to delete this uh, when I put in these comments I have to put my initials here and then a little, so I know that I've done this and then a little note to myself remove uh, or something like that and then if this doesn't work they walk through another example and maybe it's here and how to how to uh, try assigning variables different values in here to see if they can figure out where the problem is um, so the author suggests that another thing I often do is to do more output inside my program so here uh, down at the bottom your job is to go through this try to figure out what the problem is um, <clears throat> we have a a value we read in here I'm sometimes not sure if that's even been read out correctly so I'll do a system that out that print line right after that to print out that value and then I calculate this uh, value I'll do another system that ought to print that out so sometimes I just put a lot of outputs inside my program to uh, display things uh, we'll also learn later on uh, see how we can walk through the uh, program uh, and debug it live and, and see what all the variables are as we go through NC uh, programs. So debugging is a good thing to practice and a good thing to work on your tools uh, for.